Okay, we've got a uh, round bottom flask here, 50 milliliters. And we'll use a magnetic stir bar. And I've weighed out one gram of benzoin. That's our mass of benzoin, and you can see how it's a kind of an off-white powder there. So we'll add this to our guy here. Then we'll add 0.5 grams of ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate is uh, white crystalline powder here. And then I'll bring you over to the fume hood so you can see me add the uh, glacial acetic acid and set it up for reflux. Okay, I'm here at the fume hood. And so uh, this flask on the right is going to be treated in the more traditional manner. We're going to be adding four milliliters of glacial acetic acid. Actually make that three milliliters of glacial acetic acid. Okay. So three milliliters of acetic acid here. And this uh, cupric acetate here is actually in acetic acid, so um, this will make the fourth milliliter of acetic acid. So I'm going to add one milliliter of this using the transfer pipette. Okay, so there's a total of four milliliters of glacial acetic acid in there. And then what I'm going to do is put one milliliter of water in here using a different transfer pipette. So here's one milliliter of distilled water. And we'll go ahead and put this on our clamp. Make sure that's in contact with the uh, hot plate there. Set it on a nice stirring rate and heating rate. And I'll use this reflux condenser, which is open, okay? And I'll just have it air cooled. I won't circulate water through here. The purpose of the reflux condenser is to return the condensate back to the flask so it doesn't evaporate to dryness. The boiling point of acetic acid is 118 degrees Celsius. Boiling point of water is 100, so vapors will come up, condense, and just stay in there, but will maintain a constant temperature of the reaction mixture at all times. Okay, my second flask, I'm going to try a different catalyst. So this catalyst is in water. So what I'm going to do is add four milliliters of glacial acetic acid to the reaction on the left here. Okay, so, so far so good. And then what I'm going to be adding is cupric nitrate, and this is in water, so it's just a different catalyst. It's interesting to note that uh, these are both 2% solutions, but the cupric nitrate isn't as uh, strongly blue colored when it's in aqueous solution compared to that uh, acetic acid. So we will uh, add one milliliter of this. I will add one milliliter of cupric nitrate, and this is in water. And so both of these reactions have the same amount of water and acetic acid. The one on the right has cupric acetate as the catalyst. The one on the left is going to have cupric nitrate as the catalyst. So let me get this clamped and going. We'll look at these two reactions side by side. I've experienced uh, quite a bit of variability in the results from these chemical reactions. Sometimes the reaction will precipitate copper one oxide or Cu2O. And this is a water insoluble form of copper that is, uh, makes the catalyst dead. Um, it doesn't go into solution to be able to oxidize any more benzoic acid. So, I'm sorry, benzoin. So let me make sure that's heating. That is indeed heating. So we're gonna let these go. I'll pull the camera around to the side here so that we can look at these over time. 
and I'll fast forward it on YouTube so you can kind of uh, compare the colors. Remember again that the copper is blue, the product is yellow, so as the reaction progresses, it should change to a green color. Now right now the reaction mixtures are too cold, but don't worry, once they heat up to a high enough temperature, all the components should be water soluble. So let's see what the results look like.